Good evening. Good evening. Thank you all for being here tonight. As a quick reminder, if you have any cell phones or other electronic device that makes noise, if you can just be kind enough to put it in a vibrate mode or turn it off altogether, that would be wonderful. And for our guest, Sean, if you need to use the restroom, you're welcome to go out through this hallway. You'll head down to the next hallway where you'll take a left. Uh, a landmark is an elevator there, and then the restrooms, men's and women, are, are off at the end of the hallway. At Toastmasters, we provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills. This results in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Through this mission, each Toastmaster gains a clear understanding of the club's purpose, and the organization as a whole benefits from a shared set of values and goals. Please help me welcome our thought and pledge leader for this evening, Charlie Montblair. Good evening to all. Hello. Good evening. For our club today, there are dreamers and there are realists in this world. You think the dreamers would find the dreamers and the realists would find the realists. Or more often than not, the opposite is true. See, the dreamer needs the realist to keep the dreamers from going too close to the sun. And the realist, well, without the dreamers, they might not even get off the ground. Lamaron <coughs> uh, Tucker, please stand for the pledge of allegiance. A pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to introduce now the president, Charlie Bombalier. Welcome to Central Florida Facilitators Club 9958. For our guest tonight, we are called the facilitators for three reasons. We are sponsored by the Central Florida chapter of the American Society of Training and Development, a premier organization for, for professional facilitators. A good facilitator needs to be a strong communicator and an effective leader. And Toastmasters is, is all about the communication and leadership. To facilitate, <coughs> means to make things easy and possible. And we want to make things easy and possible for you tonight. We have one guest tonight, Chandra Conley. Would you please stand and just give us a few seconds to one of you. Thank you. My name is Chandra, and I was recently told about Toastmasters about a few months ago, and I decided to give it a try. So. Here I am. Thank you. Thank you. For the officers that are here tonight, I believe we're going to do an officer's meeting next week. Since I have been dying from bronchitis in the last month. And I still have it, but we'll persist on it. Some young lady gave me an invitation here introduction, which I have no clue what I did with it. It is there. For our Toastmaster of <coughs> tonight, Mickey has been a member of our club for four years. Her, her story with Toastmasters is, in her mind, <laughs> like a thriller movie mixed with romance comedy. She gets terrified with Toastmasters roles and activities sometimes. And then she falls in love with Toastmasters all over again. Please help me welcome our Toastmasters tonight, Mickey D. <laughs> Dear friends and honored guests, thank you for participating tonight. I hope this meeting 
will be not only good practice for improving, improving our public speaking skills, but also an entertaining way to spend the evening. Before I uh, have our functionaries with their roles, I have to tell you that there are some changes to the agenda. The first speaker will speak six to eight minutes instead of five to seven. And we have some changes to the functionaries. You will um, learn as we go. <laughs> I found the word. OK. Our accountant tonight is Sarah Hunt. Sarah, could you tell us, describe us your role tonight? audible crutches such as ah, uh, um, and you know, and double clutches, which is the repetition of a word while the speaker searches for their next thoughts. I also know sentences strung together with bridge words such as and, so, or like. I will sound a buzzer when I hear any of these infractions. It's not to cause embarrassment, but to get immediate feedback on areas that need improvement. It's a 10 cent fine for any infraction, guests and members who have not given their icebreaker are not fined or buzzed. I just keep track of them and I give a report at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Our grammarian tonight is Tony Heaters. As grammarian, I have two basic responsibilities for the evening. One is to provide the word of the day and in order to expand our vocabulary. Uh, actually, Gail has chosen the word of the day, mm -hmm. which Jonathan thinks is circumcised. <laughs> <laughs> circumscribed, which is a completely different word. He <laughs> probably use his own version of it. It is a verb. <laughs> Roasting and roasting you. <laughs> there are three definitions for you, and you all have probably in front of you. One, to draw a line around or encircle. Two, to confine within bounds or restrict. Three, to determine the boundaries of or define. Uh, an example of this in a sentence is last week at the contest, one of my duties was to circumscribe the speaking area for the contestants. <coughs> If you have an opportunity to speak, which must be well tonight, please try to use the word of the day. I'll keep track of those uh, people who use it. Those who do not use the word of the day uh, will be fined 25, 25 cents. I'm going to raise the price. <laughs> $21. 25 cents. Guests and members who have not yet given their icebreaker speech will not be fined at all, but for fun, try to use the word. My second responsibility is to listen for colorful humor. Boy, I'm glad I'm not in the best I'll listen for colorful imagery and use of exceptional vocabulary and grammar, and I will suggest improvements in grammar as needed. Manitos. Thank you very much. is one of our newest members, Maureen Martin. Would you like to describe our role tonight? As vote counter, I will pick up ballots from, for best speakers, best tabletopic speaker, best evaluator, and most improved speaker. I will tally the results for award presentations at the end of the meeting. I will also pick up any comments you might have written for the speakers or any meeting participant and deliver the comments to the appropriate person. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Our timer tonight is James Reeds. One of the skills Toastmasters practice is expressing a thought within any specified time. As timer, I am responsible for monitoring time for each speaker in each segment. I will operate the timing sig signal, indicating to each speaker how long he or she has been speaking. For our prepared speeches to qualify for voting, speakers must speak not less than 30 seconds under the range minimum, and not more than 30 seconds over the range maximum. And the 
times that I have for Jonathan are eight minutes, or I'm sorry, eight, uh, six to eight minutes, and uh, Mr. Morgan, eight to ten minutes. Is that, that's correct? Yes. Okay. So the circumscribed limits and time for table topics will be one minute to two minutes and 30 seconds. For evaluations, uh, the evaluators must speak a minimum of one minute and 30 seconds and a maximum of three minutes and 30 seconds. Thank you, Madam Phil. Thank you. Our prepared speeches tonight. <coughs> but first, for the benefit of our guests and new members, on the back of the agenda, you have the description of the project. What our speakers tonight are supposed to, the goals that our speakers tonight are supposed to meet. At this time, it is my honor to introduce you to our next speaker as he shares with us a game changer for his own life. It literally turned his world upside down and opened him to a world of loving and caring he had only dreamed about. It all started with a party he was invited to. It introduced him to the true love of his life, the only one that has never let him down. It is my pleasure to introduce to you our advanced communicator gold, Jonathan Dunn. Imagine you're sitting on your comfy couch on a Friday night watching your favorite television program, eating some delicious buttered popcorn, when you see the famous breaking news bulletin come across the bottom of the screen, notifying you that four people in the country of India have mysteriously just dropped dead. You sit there eating your popcorn and thinking, live in India, we're kind of just leading your insulated life. As fate would have it, about a week later, you're back on the couch after a hard day's work. This time, you're sipping on a beer. Breaking news comes across the bottom of the screen. This time, it's telling you that 50,000 people in the country of India, I mysteriously dropped in. You wipe the sweat off your brow, and you think, glad I live in America. I'm glad I'm not in India. You go about leading your life. A few days later, the new season of your favorite show has started. You're back watching the television again, and it's totally blacked out the TV. Breaking news bulletins like you've never, ever seen before. Heads of states from many different countries in Europe are coming on the screen and saying, we're circumscribing our borders. We're not letting anybody in, and we're not letting anybody out. And you're sitting there, and you're getting a knot in your throat. You're literally thinking to yourself, never in my lifetime did I think I might be around for the end of the world. But then you quickly forget, and you go about your business, you go for ice cream, a few days later, you're back in front of your TV set, and the President of the United States of America is on the screen, and he's telling you, this is an epidemic of global proportions. Your worst fears, you might realize them. This literally, ladies and gentlemen, looks like it could be the end of the world. And the reason he's telling you this is 
thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people in the European nations. They've been dropping dead. What has been discovered is that for two weeks, there are absolutely no signs of this virus. And then for two days, you become symptomatic. And then one day later, you're gone. The President of the United States, I'm sorry if you have anybody that's overseas right now. I'm being honest with you, you may never, ever see them again. We're not letting anybody into the country. We're not letting anybody out of the country. We simply can't afford to. You're literally sitting there on your couch just overcome with fear. You're so scared. You're so scared that your life gets really, really teeny tiny. I mean, it's really teeny tiny. In fact, you're not even going to leave your house. You're so scared. About a week later, though, you really, at this point, you don't have much to do besides watch TV. Breaking news. Thousands upon thousands of people in the United States of America have begun to drop dead. Drop it dead. Same thing. Two weeks, no symptoms. Two days, symptoms. They're gone. You're sweating bullets. You're paralyzed to fear. The president did notify that the best medical minds in the face of the planet are sequestered trying to figure this out around the clock. Around the clock. A few days later, breaking news bulletin. We think we've found a test that can distinguish what's going on. But better yet, we think if we can find one person and one person only that has clean blood, we can develop an antidote to this virus and the world can be saved. The news bulletin goes on to ask everybody to immediately get in their cars and go to the hospital for the test. You show up at the hospital, you see some neighbors you hadn't seen in a while. It's a lady and her son. He's a teenager. You guys have went in and you've gotten your test. And you're out just saying, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe it. There's a huge commotion at the door. All these doctors come out, megaphones. We're looking for Scott Graham. We're looking for Scott Graham. He's got clean blood. It's your neighbor's son. You watch as your neighbor and her son, they go to the group of doctors. The doctors say to Miss Brandt and her son, we had no idea this was going to be a juvenile that had the clean blood. We're going to need you, Miss Brandt, to sign a consent form for him to give us blood. Whatever, whatever, I'll, I'll, I'll sign anything. She goes to the form and she notices. This is all of his blood. It's not part of it. It's all of it. If she signs this consent form, her son is going to die. The doctor says, would you like a few minutes with your son? Of course, she takes it. And her son is a very brave teenager. He said, Mom, I'd be happy to sacrifice my life if it means saving the world. What better thing can I do? They hug. They cry. She kisses him. He goes to the doctor. He gives his life. The doctors come out. <clears throat> Everybody, Scott Brand has saved the world. And it's a riot. It's insane. It's crazy, the joy. 
A couple days later, you're back home, you're eating the popcorn. All the dignitaries are on the TV. Scott Grant, he gave his life to save the world. There is going to be a humongous celebration recognizing his life because he led such an awesome, pure life that he had clean blood. And there's a celebration this Sunday celebrating his life. Won't you come to it? Madam Toastmaster. take a stand regarding knowing the consequences that would come for it, I ask you to stand up. If you've been willing to take the risk and accept the consequences of the stand that you take, you're willing to take that stand. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, if you wish, you may. Think about why you took that stand and the consequences you risked perhaps the ones you ended up receiving as well. Throughout our history, we have put many people up on a pedestal for having taken their stand, and some of them paid the ultimate price. In the past century, Martin Luther King Jr. here in the United States, Mohandas Gandhi in India, and another one that we also will mention often is Nelson Mandela. We know them particularly because they're willing to take a stand. And they took that stand knowing that people were going to be angry with them. And some of them would be so angry that they'd be willing to kill. But they took that stand because they knew what they believed was right. Those are the people that I look to and say those are the great leaders. Why great leaders? Because with their leadership, great change came. So when I look to leaders, I look to those who are willing to make change. All of us here that we know of from Toastmasters, where are you going to suggest someone to go to find leaders and to learn about leadership? Any 
Hey, one minute. Toastmasters. Toastmasters? Why would you come to Toastmasters? Because Toastmasters is what? Where leaders are made. <laughs> <laughs> Where leaders are made. That's our tagline. I got it. <laughs> We say this is where you should come because this is where leaders are made. It's right there in our manual and all of our marketing materials. Pick it up, look at it, it must be true. It says so. I am an advanced Toastmaster Gold. It's a title that you can't have if you joined any time after 2006 because the name changed after that, Advanced Communicator Gold. I should have long ago reached Distinguished Toastmaster. The reason I haven't, the one thing I haven't done, district office. I've done everything else. Yes, at first it was because I wanted to do the contests. Sure, that was fun. I get a lot out of it. Then later along the line, I'm a parent that's sharing my son half the time. I get him only half the time. I only get him half my weekends. Guess what? You're going to be a district officer. You're going to have a lot of time on your weekends being taken up by meetings. Guess which is more important? No problem there. Then I got to watch as my wife was doing the district office, and while she got to do all those fun meetings, and I got to learn what she was doing, and then I also got to see what was happening. Now, mind you, I have done all those steps. One of the stories I can tell you was when I started a new club back in 2011. Some of you may remember what happened here in Toastmasters in 2011. A hint? The rebranding occurred in 2011. This is our old logo hanging around back here. This is the new logo. Nice and shiny. As a result of the changes, we've got things like the old badge that you still see me wearing versus the new badge you see many of the others wearing. Notice the dis difference? Hmm. When that branding came out, my new club was just forming. My wife and I had formed that one. As a result of that branding, they suspended sales of the store for anything that had the logo on it for six months. For six months, our new club couldn't get anything. Our charter member certificates didn't arrive for half a year. Why did it take six months? Because they wanted to suspend the sales and not print anything new until the August conference, the International Convention, so they could announce the new logo for everyone to see in a big stage production. You would have thought they were releasing a new iPhone. <laughs> and you know that's what's going on in their head. They're thinking big branding, big corporate branding initiative. And if you look at the restrictions on the, using the logo, it, that's exactly what it looks like too. Why are we thinking big idea? In fact, anyone heard the nice little nickname that new tag has gotten? It didn't come from me. <laughs> Looks like welcome to Walmart. <laughs> you get it? Why are we thinking that way? Why was the international board thinking that way? I kind of wonder sometimes. But in America, we often look at the, oh, corporate is where leadership is. But here in Toastmasters, we have this concept that leadership, we can put in a manual and say, this is how to do it. So we have our competent leadership manual. And we'll have to learn about our mentoring, our time management, and our critical thinking. And I want you to tell me exactly who do you know throughout history who is the best time manager you've ever heard of? is really about leadership. The second story I can tell you was watching while my wife was doing her work and she did a great job as area governor and went on to division governor. And if you recall what was happening at, for her for that, that division conference that first year where we were doing all the fantasy stuff and we had a great time putting together all of the registration certificates, putting little decorations everywhere and did a fantastic job. The division contest went well. She was doing a superb job. But when things got very difficult for us back at home, towards the second half of that term, her area governors had to step in where she couldn't do the work. And then eventually, after a little bit, she was simply asked to resign. 
Now, mind you, her predecessor two years earlier did absolutely nothing. His area governors did everything. And he still went the full year. Not only was she asked to resign, she was effectively not acknowledged for having even served in the office, as several others who resigned were during that year. We're here in Toastmasters to learn. And in order to learn, you have to make mistakes. If you're going to make the mistakes to figure out what to do right and what to do wrong. And when Smedley started this organization 90 years ago, the key, as he pointed out, was about evaluations and mentoring teaching, learning. And if somebody isn't pulling their weight, you help them. You don't drop them. Where would you drop somebody who's not pulling their weight? Maybe at Walmart. Where are we coming up with these concepts happening in Toastmasters? The third story actually refers to a district governor. It used to be several years back, before the rebranding, actually several years, our district governor each year would come around and he'd come up with his own theme for his year, his, while he's in office. He comes up with his theme, and often it was different than the theme you'd hear from TI. When you pick up the Toastmasters magazine at the beginning of each term, They'll be talking about it throughout their year, whatever their motto is, their theme for that particular year. I've done that as president. It's a great way to rally people and to give yourself incentive and your own momentum to move forward. But this district governor I was talking to because he didn't make a theme. And I was like, well, that's kind of curious. So I asked him, why no theme this year? Turns out the international board came around to them and said, stop doing that. Don't make your own theme, use our theme, so you don't muddle our message. Muddle your message. <laughs> I thought we're here to learn leadership. And if this is a great technique to be a leader, why aren't we actually encouraging it rather than discouraging it? Why would we want to avoid muddling a message from high up what does it matter? Seems to me, if Toastmasters is like this, this isn't how leaders are made. This is how leaders are spayed. With all the desire we have to come in and learn, we turn around and cut it off punish you for doing the things you should be doing in order to grow, to learn. This is what we're here for. So if you're willing to take that stand with me and say, stop that, I'd ask you to stand now, if you're willing to take that stand. For although I am willing to go forward and be a leader without any followers, I would hate to see a world of followers with no leader. And those are
Thank you. Now, may we have a timer support. Madam Postmaster, Jonathan Dunn, with the required time, six to eight minutes, spoke at eight minutes and 30 seconds. Qualified. <laughs> Stephen Morgan, between Woo! eight minutes and 10, um, eight to 10 minutes at 10 minutes and 27 seconds, so both gentlemen. Woo! Sometimes I like to say, 
you have the audacity to doubt my veracity <laughs> and to insinuate that I prevaricate? Are you calling me a liar? So, I have more fun with rhetorical sayings and verbiage than anything else. However, I don't want to truncate this discussion. So I will now call on... Oh, did you say then? <laughs> Anyone? She's got the list. No, I've got the list. Just say, and then? And then! <laughs> Let's see, and then... Sarah. And then, I'm the complete opposite. All those fancy words. I just want a trip to Hawaii. That's what I know I want. And on top of that, I get a one month paid vacation off of work to do it. Which means all of you have that too. So I'm off to Hawaii and I'm thrilled. Not going to check my email, no correspondences. I'm hoping I can take the family. Mm -hmm. I'm going to negotiate that point. But why I dreamed of that and this envelope came in the mail after the radio show announced my name, I really couldn't believe it. But I immediately ran to my closet. Got my fancy suitcase, and it's really small, this little small silver suitcase. I thought, it doesn't matter, I just need a swimsuit, maybe some workout clothes, maybe a nice outfit for dinner. I will start to write all the things I'm going to do in Hawaii. And then, and then, let's see, Charlie. comes unlucky Charlie. <laughs> I almost won the lottery last week. I only missed it by six numbers. <laughs> but actually, there's a little story when I lived in Fort Lauderdale and there was this little red-headed girl that was selling raffle tickets for her school. And I bought some, she knocked on the door and I bought some. About a week later she comes back and says, Mister, I only got a couple more tickets, I only got a couple more. I don't want any more tickets, I've already bought five from you. She goes away, about an hour later, I got to sell you some tickets. There's a hundred houses around here. But you're the only one that bought tickets from me before. Says, if you knock on some other door, somebody Get some from you. Go ahead, try some more. I swear to you that at 8 o'clock at night, and that little red headed girl is at my door. I did what you told me, and I can't sell these tickets. Obviously, I care. She had two more tickets left, and I gave her a couple dollars. Do you know that that? ticket won me $3,000 <laughs> and I gave her $100 for selling me that ticket and she was thrilled to death. And then, and then, and then, and then I don't have as an interesting a story as Charlie. The little red-headed girl that came by my house wanted to sell me cookies. <laughs> I bought them because I love the thin mitts and can't help but eat the box up myself. But a lucky time that I did have was when this wonderful package arrived in the mail. And when I opened the package up like an excited boy on, on Christmas Eve, I found an amazing, amazing photograph of my father and my two older brothers uh, just before he passed away. There was no monetary value to that, but the emotional impact was worth more than any treasure that I could ever hope for. 
and then. <laughs> and then. Well, and then I was scrolling through my emails and I saw one from Sarah. And she was telling everybody she'd be absent for the month because she was going to Hawaii. And then she said, why don't you come with me? And I went, yeah, babe, I need a vacation. So I immediately got on the phone and I called Sarah and she said, well, I'm taking the kids and I kind of need a nanny. Would you do that? And I went, well, as long as I can sit on the beach and play with you, absolutely, I love you little kids. They're so cute. I said, you don't have to pay me. I said, I assume your vacation is taken care of, so we'll share the room. And I've got about 180,000 miles on United, so I can get there on my own. So we are going in May, right? It's all planned. We've got the tickets. She's got the hotel room. We're looking for side trips. We're exploring the internet, deciding where to go. I've been there, so I have some ideas. So we will not be here the month of May. Just in case you haven't been reading your email, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> and then. And then. <laughs> Sean, did you want to try? You don't uh -huh. have to. You want to? OK. To go to Hawaii. <laughs> so, so what I did was I told my husband, look, I'm going to be gone for about a month. <laughs> Don't burn the house down with your cooking, but pay the bills and I'll be back. <laughs> Benzo, it had just gotten freshly detailed, and it's got 17s. 
It's a Benzo station wagon. Because I was on the way to pick up Tony, Sarah, and catch this, my three ex-wives. <laughs> wagon broke down on the road to Hannah, which of course is mostly this barely two-lane road which narrows to one when you go over those bridges. Great waterfalls, but alas, not a great place to stop because once you stop, well, you block everybody. It is the only road to Hannah. Therefore, I had to pull out the phone, pick up Uber, trying to find the next closest person who could come and pick us all up. And it sent to me Charlie. <laughs> Charlie came along to come pick us all up. Somehow we had to stuff a couple in the trunk to make it work, but somehow we got it in there. With all of us sitting in there and trying to wind our way back to the road to ha from Hana to Hana. Which way were we going? I've forgotten at this point. Because at that point we're worried about it wasn't Charlie that actually was driving the car. He was the one who just arranged it. He got sick along the way. We had a substitute come in. And this substitute was one of those drivers who apparently just passed the test to be allowed. <laughs> Turned out he'd already been charged back in Honolulu before he got over to here, but nonetheless, they hadn't pulled him off the system yet. He was still picking people up. And since he was particularly interested in John and the Thong with his new circumstances, <laughs> we were all completely lost because he didn't take us back to where we were supposed to go. He instead was making everyone else uh, paying whatever bit we could just so that we didn't have to watch what happened next. And then... <laughs> then... <laughs> Let's see, who else can I pick on that hasn't been? Everybody's been done already. Are the evaluators, are you guys ready enough to have a question? And then, Gail. How in the world do you circumscribe or circumcise that? Well, let me attempt. You boys get a shot at all of this. Charlie failed at the Uber with the images of Jonathan was TMI. <laughs> but we now have to cross the Atlantic because Uber has been summoned in Hawaii where all the girls are. And the girls, you all are looking at all <laughs> I won't, I won't go that far. I won't blow the belt again. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> and then... <laughs> It comes all the way back to verbiage. We each and every one of us have to do a TED Talk. And TED Talks are about 18 minutes, I read, from the, uh, the manual that we get every month. And they're so much more difficult. And you have to have an inspirational or new idea. So all of us were scrambling as we're packing for Hawaii and <laughs> enjoying our money and all these different things. But we realized we have to keep a, a huge audience interested and in our brand new idea for that long length of time and we're getting less and less enthusiastic about our prize <laughs> as we realize that those TED Talks are taped and they can be called up on the computer at any time through the rest of our lifetime. So whatever we do up there is not just a learning experience, it is your permanent record. <laughs> so we're all a little less enthusiastic about our prizes than we all of us whimper and, and decide to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun doing this and hearing everything that you guys have said. It is a little bit early, but I don't have any more questions or any more people. So, um, James, can I get a timer's report? <laughs> Yes, ma'am, you can do the time for <laughs> <laughs>
Johns Roberts, the word Smith, was at 1 minute and 15 seconds. He qualified. Sarah's beginning the trip to Hawaii was at 1 minute and 5 seconds. She also qualified. Uh, Charlie and Little Red Riding Hood Raffle was at 1 minute and 35 seconds. He also qualified. Um, myself at the Great Photo, 1 minute and 2 seconds qualified. Tony decided to invite herself to Sarah's trip, and uh, she was at 1 minute and 16 seconds. Um, Sean also went to Hawaii, but left the house to burn down with her husband's cooking <laughs> at 21 seconds, unfortunately did not qualify. Uh, Mickey, going to Romania to visit family, 1 minute 12 seconds, just she qualified. Jonathan, <laughs> Jonathan. <laughs> Circumscribed with the thong at a minute and 42 seconds and qualified. Um, Stephen's awesome Uber wild ride with um, Charlie in the trunk or somewhere with a, a minute and 26 seconds. He also qualified. Um, Gail kept it above the belt, but uh, only for 46 seconds. She did not qualify. Then Linda wrapped it up for us with TED Talks in a minute and four seconds. She qualified. <laughs> Because the clean blood and the, you know, the, I forget what you said, you 
said awesome clean life and, and it ju I just wasn't clear exactly what I was supposed to do. But I did enjoy the building, the story, it had an excellent organization and, it, and we were with you through all the different stages of the story and it was great. But I have to, I have to say my, my uh, original suggestion is to make exactly what we were being persuaded to do. The action point was not clear to me. And I thought that it was excellently delivered though. And everything else about it was that logical link. My uh, mind kind of tends to, to zing to that. So uh, that was uh, one point that needed improvement. But as always, you did not, it was right at the top of the list of the, the circumscribed <laughs> items that you were supposed to cover in this and use no notes if possible. You hit that out of the ballpark as usual, no notes. And you said your point of view excellently and you really dug into our emotions. We were all thinking we were going to drop dead any second. So you, you tapped that with, with expertise. Have to say, and I did enjoy every minute of it. Thank you. Thank you, Rosa. Our second evaluator this evening has a number of continuous stories developing. March 21st, she'll be, excuse me, she will be with 15 plus former U.S. Gator cheerleaders to celebrate memories of being a winning national squad for the Florida Gators. Less than a week later, <laughs> she will join, <coughs> she will join other family members at Hill Air Force Base, where she will help her help rededicate a museum named for her grandfather in the namesake of Hill Air Force Base in Utah. Continuous stories, something she enjoys particularly when delivering an evaluation as she is for Stephen Morgan's speech. Please welcome DTM Gil Hill Smith. Yes, your fifth time through, tenth time through, thirteenth time through, was to inspire the audience. The purpose of an inspirational speech is to motivate an audience to improve personally, emotionally, professionally, or spiritually. It encourages listeners to experience greater success, adopt higher goals or ideals, or contribute to the success or goals of an organization. So I ask by a show of hands, how many of you felt you were challenged to improve, whether personally, emotionally, professionally, or even spiritually? Okay. The next part of the speech, or part of the speech, I should say, was after connecting with the audience, which I thought Stephen did beautifully when he engaged every one of us in his opening to stand up if they thought they could risk knowing that supporting an issue or a topic would indeed be a little controversial. So after he connected with the audience, his next step was to explain why and how changes will be occurring and why listeners, current attitudes, feelings, values, concerns, hopes, desires, fears, and goals may be inadequate or even counterproductive. Then Stephen went into what all of us learn in Toastmasters is to share stories, personal stories, on how they relate and how they are to support his position. 
And of course, structurally, the speech was dynamic because it had a really strong, inspirational conclusion. But I do ask you now, as a 10th speech inspiring your audience, it was to finally see if the audience was emotionally moved, was it dynamic, did it challenge and demand that they commit to the cause and the conclusion dramatically, and by show of hands, how many would you agree with that statement, that Stephen did dramatically help pull in the audience to support his stance? Yes, I think so too. So Stephen, just by the support in the show, I think you fulfilled the objectives of the speech well. I have some individual comments in here. I always look to you for the grammar, for your sentence structure, a few things I picked up there for you to improve on. But overall, I thought it was very purposeful that you took almost a counter stand to a Toastmaster audience to position in a statement on the leadership track that Toastmasters is supposed to be providing, yet you presented something a little bit counterintuitive. So well done, risky to a Toastmaster audience. Mr. General Dowler. Can we have a time and three court, please? Mr. General Evaluator, Linda Earl spoke about Jonathan's speech for two minutes to five seconds. She qualified. And Gail Bill Smith spoke about Stephen Morgan at three minutes and 47 seconds. She also qualified. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. 347 is too much. Then, that is my mistake. I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was, it was it, it, I, I put the light on according to, I, I put it at 3.30. Um, so that would be my fault. Which light went on at 3.30? The red light. Yeah. So it, it, I, I wrote it down wrong. It's absolutely my fault. It's not Yeah. Yeah. Technical failure. Same. So she got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she got it. Is. She got it. Oh. Yes. My mistake. Okay. Thank you. You loser. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Eating a cookie. You're right. Uh, that's leadership. Okay. <laughs> May I have the uh, outcome? <laughs> <laughs> Please vote for the best evaluator. Uh -huh. And doing that, may I have the off counter report? Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 Running through the names, that's who we have. James had two ahs. Gayla didn't catch anything. Tony had one double clutch. John didn't catch anything. Charlie, two double clutches. Linda, you had four R's, three double clutches. Stephen, one double clutch. Jonathan, nothing. Susan, one double clutch. And a one hand. And Mickey had one double clutch. I didn't hear anything from Chandra or Marie. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have the grammarian report, please? <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that missed it, I'm Tony Diddles, and you're not. <laughs> Grammar, I 
guess, is that you include you talk to your audience as if they were participating in the scenario. It was your comfy couch. You were so scared. Your neighbor's son, and you were very consistent throughout the entire presentation. So that's a way to engage the audience and involve them in the consistency with what I'm very impressed with. <laughs> Stephen, did you actually say this? This isn't how leaders are made, this is how leaders are spayed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said that, okay, because it's kind of the paper. John, you had a couple lines, and I, I didn't get to write them down. It's something about you have the audacity. Tell to me doubt that. my veracity. Veracity. And what was the other? And to insinuate that I prevaricate. All right. <laughs> that was great. Gail, what's TMI? What's Toastmasters International. Oh, really? <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah. I thought it was something. <laughs> okay. And Linda, you made us seem callous. All right, that's all I got, guys. <laughs> Please, for the most improved Toastmaster, and as I give you the general evaluation. We started on time, which went well. I believe that the meeting really went well for the short amount, small amount of people that we have. We made it go very smoothly. Of course, I want to give Congratulations to Shauna for having the courage to get up and speak for the first night of your visit. Thank you. Very, very nice. Let's give her a hand. And we will definitely finish on time tonight. <laughs> if not a little early. Is there any club business? Yes, Tony. And no one else is Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I sent an email around to the officers several weeks ago and did not hear from everyone. It was in regards to the auction because I don't know if everybody got the notice. Division D, for the very first time, is running an auction and it's three days before ours was scheduled. And they're expecting a lot from everybody, I'm sure, to show up and to raise money um, for the division, I guess. I had asked if we should postpone our meeting, and I thought it was a good idea. You know, Gail was a yes, I was a no. I think we got or a yes to go ahead with it. There were three or four no's, but I didn't hear from everybody. But I thought we should resolve this for Mickey's sake, mm -hmm. so she can plan the schedule. I, I had talked to a couple of people about it for some reason, but I think we should respond because I really think the results are going to be minimal a few days right after that big one. We do like to have a lot of guests, and it's, that helps a lot. It's going to yeah, be back to back, and people are going to. It's going to, it's right it's going to be tough for them to yeah. come. Yeah. Do we want to take a vote? Do we just want to say postpone? Why don't we just Does take a vote? Anybody have another view? April 15th, our tax refunds. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> Instead of having a meeting that's called taxes, let's go party. <laughs> Dinner. Let's throw, yeah, let's throw a party instead. So should we vote for, for April? April? We vote to postpone, and yeah. then I'm going to send an email with a few dates, like a proposal. Yeah. Tell me if it's okay or 
I think maybe at, at the officer meeting, just look at what the rest of the year okay. for June is going to look like. So this and where does it fit well in? Well, to postpone it for now. And then look at look at the dates of the district and the division. You know, whatever we know is going on. And let's <coughs> Because we have money in the treasury, it's not an urgent thing. Um, but this, this this is probably why it's a good idea to have it in January. The idea was right after Christmas when we were still in the new presence and stuff. So okay. should we go with I don't so far for it's to postpone it? Arms. I'll show this arm. Okay. <laughs> postpone, yeah. Okay. So we'll postpone it. Next, we'll talk about it next week anyway. They signed up.
I have been just celebrating too much of this. I finally got a job business, but it's got to you ready there, Charlie? Oh, yeah, Charlie, we're late. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. 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 Let's see.